Howdy! If you ever played a game series called Stalker, then you probably know about the X-Ray game engine. Originally, it was a proprietary piece of software developed by JSC Game World, a Ukrainian company and a developer of Stalker franchise. Released on March 2007, X-Ray game engine was used to make the first three games. Rumors are that even first Metro 2033 was also made with X-Ray, and even the original Stalker 2 was planned to use an evolved X-Ray engine, sometimes called X-Ray 2. But as we already know, JSC switched to Unreal Engine at some point. Thus, X-Ray engine was lost in the sense of time and became pretty much forgotten by everyone. Or was it? You see, somewhere in mid-late 2000s, X-Ray game engine source code was leaked partially. It's important to emphasize that it was not an authorized and not a complete code, although it was enough to understand engine internals, rebuild missing parts and eventually run the game with the compiled code. Over many years, mothers and programmers gradually fixed and modernized the X-Ray engine, and it led to projects like OpenX X-Ray, Monolith Engine, iX-Ray and many other forks of the X-Ray. Some of them even managed to implement the support of 64-bit architecture, a working DLSS and multi-threading in the code. Of course, none of these are official, yet most of those projects are open source and hosted on GitHub. And if you ask me, I guess that's the main reason Stalker Modding is still alive today. It's even made it up to the point where JSC now supports it, as one of the most huge mod packs for Stalker Anomaly, Gamma, was recently published on GOG. And probably the most interesting part here is that uh, Anomaly Gamma uses an X-ray fork called X-ray Monolith that was pretty much recreated from the leaked source code. And now it's officially backed up by JSC. In a tiny world we live in, I guess. Ok, but the main bottleneck of X-ray engine still remains the same – performance. Thus, at some point, I even tried to make my own fork of X-Ray Monolith. Just to tinker with the source code a bit though, nothing special. However, I must tell I am not C++ programmer, so once again that's mostly for fun. But I still managed to rewrite some parts of the engine to make it somewhat more performance friendly. For example, I've changed XR synchronized component to support shared access logs. Because for some reason, currently, the engine uses an exclusive lux literally everywhere. No matter if the operation is read or write, it's just BAM locks it exclusively, and that's kinda wastes the CPU time. After that, I've implemented a new system in a component called XRString, which is responsible for string lookups in the game. Thus, those lookups should work a bit more faster now. I also managed to change a spatial component a bit in order to replace an erase with further shifts to a more simpler swap and pop code. The reason is that, as far as I know, in C++, std vector is often slow because it preserves order. So the call of erase forces it to shift a bunch of elements uh, to the left to fill the gap. But if we use swap and pop instead, we effectively skip the shift part. Of course, it means uh, we won't preserve the order, but at this specific place in the code, the order of elements doesn't matter. Overall, it leads to a more faster code execution complexity. Compared to original, it's still ON because of, uh, well, the use of find, but with swap and pop we effectively skip the shifts in cost. At this point, I also tried to rewrite the iSpatial component a bit further to use the new shared lux system. However, I faced multiple LTCG issues. And as a Rust developer that used to LTO, not gonna lie, I was a bit confused. But I still managed to compile the engine and all the new code worked just perfect in the game. And while I spent a whole evening on this, by the end of the day I decided to drop the idea. And instead of rewriting the engine, that is obviously not an easy task, I went with a completely different approach. I shifted my focus on Lua, because apparently modpacks like Gemma comes with hundreds and even thousands of Lua scripts. 
commands. All of them are executed by the engine. And of course, it takes CPU time and makes the overall experience more stuttery and less FPS friendly. So I thought, why not optimize it? Okay, first of all, X-Ray Monolith Fork comes with an old Lua 5 and 1 standard, and it has like a built-in Lua G204 compiler. With this knowledge in mind, I've started analyzing the source code of Lua mods in the game. Now, once again, I am not a Lua expert. Literally, the only thing I rely on is my previous programming experience. And the fact that Lua is one of the most easy programming languages out there. Okay, okay, actually, I am a bit more familiar with Lua than it seems, because I made a bunch of mods for Anomaly. They are all published on ModDB and if you want to check them out, I'll leave a link in the description below. And after some time, I came to a conclusion that most of the Lua mods are actually poorly optimized. But let me elaborate why. You see, in programming, we have a multiple ways of writing the same code. Take for example, a simplest math square. In Lua, you can write something like this. You call a pow function of a math module. And if you run this code, the square of v will be printed. Of course, you can also make it to the power of 3 to get a cube and to a power of half to get a square root. But did you ever ask yourself how exactly the compiler executes your code? You see, bytecode wise, Lua JIT compiles this code to a C function call under the hood. Fortunately, it doesn't make any additional memory allocations and things are being passed through the stack frames. However, we can calculate the same math operation without the unnecessary function call. Just write this code instead. Now it will be compiled to a single machine instruction. The same result, but no function call overhead. Of course, I can't argue that it takes literally nanoseconds of CPU time to spare, but that's only one simple example of Lua code optimization. And don't forget that there are thousands of Lua scripts files being executed at the same time in a single threaded engine. And that's where things get interesting. At this point, I've came up with an idea, or should I say a proof of concept. What if we write an automated code optimizer for Lua? A tool that will automatically scan all the scripts in order to find the potential optimization issues. So we could try to autofix some of them. I mean, by the end of the day, all we need is a Lua iced parser and a spare evening to write the basic prototype. And guess what? I had it all. So let me introduce you. Alao, Anomaly Lua Auto Optimizer, a tool written in Python that utilizes ISD parser under the hood and can be used to analyze hundreds and thousands of Lua scripts in a matter of seconds. And what makes it even more useful is that the tool can automatically apply some of the fixes. And just to make it safe to use, I've separated those fixes into different uh, levels. The green ones, those are safe to apply. The yellow ones, apply them at your own risk as it may lead to CTDs. And the red ones should be manually reviewed. Before you ask, yes, it worked. Honestly, I was surprised that it did. But even with my high-end PC, I felt a noticeably smoother experience. Frame timing also reduced a bit, but what's more important, it became much more stable. Now, of course, Alao is an open source project, and you can check it out on my GitHub page and even try it yourself. Because although it meant for Lua that comes with X-Ray, it should work with any other Lua scripts out there. And here is a simple example of how it autofixes some of the performance issues. The original code here is something you will constantly face in Lua scripts. As you see, it has a complexity of O n squared. Below is the same code but automatically fixed by the tool, and now it has a complexity of just O n, which is significantly faster. The reason why is that the original code makes an unnecessary string allocations every iteration, and of course it wastes the CPU time. Once again, that's only one of the examples of patterns that my tool can autofix. Of course, there are many other patterns with a different performance impact. However, I was kinda happy with the result. Just like I said, it was more of a proof of concept that worked well by the end of the day. And now it made the X-Ray engine more optimized and performance friendly. Anyways, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and now you know a bit more about performance, Lua and X-Ray engine. For me, it was an interesting journey and I had lots of fun doing it. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like. I'll see you in the next video.